at what you see before you, you are actually on the fringes now of, of the camp of the English army. This is where the English army camped. We'll look at the knoll later. I'm going to go up there and uh, just view it from that perspective. But the English army were camped all around here. And the reason it was such a great camp are the pools of water that are in the cars. Contrary to popular belief, it's not a bog, it's not a marsh. This is really hard ground that, that I'm standing on here. And it's ideal for camping, but the pools of water were also ideal for fresh water for the horses and uh, for the men. Now, when they saw the Scots coming through the wood, in fact, the Scots had already come through the wood. When the Scots came close to them, just beyond that gate there, that's the great bend of the Bannockburn over to the left, but just beyond that gate there, the Scottish right wing under James Douglas ran forward to close off this bit of ground and they knelt down to put the butts of their pikes into the ground to receive the English. Gloucester came off the knoll. He came off the knoll with great concern because the Scottish lines were closing and he mounted his horse. People were in confusion. Nobody followed him. He didn't even wait to get his armour on. Possibly not even his helmet or a lance. Took his sword and he rode headlong over here, roughly to where that gate is now. And he was unhorsed and it was said he was pierced by many wounds. He met his death there. He had about 500 of his own men that he turned up for the battle here. Once Gloucester is unhorsed, the Scots move ever forward, just in the direction I am going now, to seal off the amount of distance that the English have to charge. And that was the key to the whole battle. Bruce is off to the center, roughly where those trucks were, pressing towards the telegraph pole and the pond in the distance, Moray on the, the, the far side. And this is where the cavalry charged and no one else could get into the battle behind them. They were jammed. Even the foot soldiers couldn't get into the battle. The pikes held firm, they pressed forward, they stabbed, and chopped their way through the English army until it gave way and King Edward fled and the English ran towards the Great Bend in the Bannockburn there where even more of them met their end. But this is the front line of the battle. Bannockburn.